Uh, like I said, yesterday is crazy. Um, I got some emails. People are like, hey, I'm going out of town this weekend. So on and so forth for Easter. So hold on a second. It is a, another smooth fruit smoothie day. So this is the agenda. Today is Thursday. There will not be a webinar tomorrow. We'll resume this again next Monday. So there will be nothing Friday, nor Saturday, nor Sunday. Because the people said, I don't want to work on the weekends. So that's another thing. And today is going to be a little different since um, I know I'm not going to do this tomorrow and I know a lot of people are going to check out. I am going to do what people love and do a Q&A session. But before we get into that, I'm just going to uh, say, hey, thanks to the new people who showed up today that's never been here before. Very, very cool. Appreciate it. And uh, just going forward for next week, now you show up, you're going to need a pen or pencil, paper or notepad, the right fucking attitude. <laughs> yes, you can use your iPad. However, you get more juice from writing it down. Uh, the format's 25 to 40 minutes a day. We've been going over, trying to work on that. Uh, Q&A session after the presentation and recorded versions of this course will be available in the Facebook group. And what my mind is telling me to do, since we're only on day three, I'm probably going to start all over again Monday. I will do that. Make it clean. Make it easier. Make it more special. So that will be the plan in my mind. Could change, but you're on the email list. And if you're on the email list, you will get any notification of what I'm going to do. And I will send out what time this kicks off Monday through the email list. I love this pledge. I really, I do. I am worth my ambition. I live for now. The past be damned. The future is mine to shape. Understand success is not a moment. It's a life. Despite the fear in my heart, I will move forward each day I breathe. And we're going to have some gold. And let's talk about this. We're going. I'm going to do something a little different today before, uh, after I do this. You're going to design your life. Live how your intention warrants. Increase your business to 10000 per month net, not gross. At some point, gain freedom from a normal life of TGI F Friday living. And today is Q&A day. So the whole deal is, I'm going to take a second because sometimes it takes a minute for the questions to go through the system. But you can ask me any freaking question you want to about business. And we'll do that. And I'm going to do a mini little presentation about something because I started, I'm actually going to talk about this because this is going to be kind of like just open forum. I started Conundrum Publishing basically on $285. I did not do a big reinvest until like 18 months later. So the first 14 months, I got to $62,000. And 18 months later, I started buying stuff. So there are many people who are like, hey, how can I start a business for cheap? How can I start a business with no money? Uh, we're going to talk about that. So we're going to put that there. And uh, I am going to go here. Now, actually, I'm going to send this link out to everybody. Get to the questions. All right, get to the questions. All right, I'm going to send this link so you can check it out later. Send that to everybody. Now, this is from, <clears throat> actually, I'm just going to go deep with this. There's this book. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Audible. It's called A $100 Startup. There are people... <clears throat> uh, excuse me, that have uh, started all kinds of businesses around the world with little or no money. And what I'm trying to do is to get you to get past that uh, 
limitation in your mind that, hey, I need all of this stuff. You really don't. You need to get started. That's what you need. You need to get started. And this is a good resource for you because I'll even do this. I'll make it real easy for you because I recommend this book several, several, several times. I'm going to go to Amazon and I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. And I'm going to send it to you. So you can go ahead and buy that today. It's like 12 bucks on Prime. I mean, and also, you can get it used. You know, if you don't want to spend the 12 bucks, you can get it used. Or if you want to go to Kindle, you can get it for nine bucks. All right, get the book. It's a good book. Read the stories, it'll give you motivation. So that link is there. <laughs> That's funny. I'm recording if you want a copy. That's funny. Uh huh. Nobody needs to learn how to speak Russian. Okay. Everyone should have video now. Uh, just answered those questions. All right. Back to. I just went through it real quick. If you got any questions, just go ahead and shoot. But I'm gonna. Like I said, I sent that out to everybody, and I'm going to go here and make that go away. Essentially, everyone here wants to do something different. You want to build a business, make more money, add to the money you're making, make your business better. Everybody's here for that reason. The problem that I've seen in the last five years is many people don't think they can do it. Just don't think they can do it. Don't think they're smart enough. Don't think they're special enough. Think there's this uh, thing I'll call myths. I have a great admiration for immigrants because when I got into business, I ran into many immigrants. If you are here in Atlanta and you go to the Apparel Mart downtown, there's the Apparel Mart, the Gift Mart, and the Merchandise Mart, called America's Mart, all together. And you go on these floors, you're going to see nothing but immigrants all over the place doing the wholesale business. When I got in the storage auction business, I started doing one more immigrants, uh, my Latino brothers. And it was just like, wow, this is uh, very, very interesting. This is very interesting because these people understand the opportunity that is presented here in the United States of America that uh, many people just for some reason miss. But just go ahead and read this, check it out, get the book. Matter of fact, make that your weekend task. Hold on a second. Make that your weekend task. Get this book here on Amazon. I sent the link out. It'll go through it. And see how it can jog your mind for making money in creative ways. Because there's a guy in this book that started a mattress company in the country. Dude was delivering mattresses on a freaking bicycle. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's interesting what you can do when you take the limitations off. I see there are new people coming in. So essentially, this is the deal. Today is open forum Thursday. There will be no webinar tomorrow. Webinars start again on Monday because of the impending holiday weekend. So just to let you know, if you got a question about any type of question about business, shoot, just let it roll. And let's see. Here's one. <clears throat> This is from David. How did you manage and coordinate your Latino brothers or other resources? And how would you apply the power of six to actions you want other people to do? I'll deal with the first part of that with the Latino brothers. First time I hired the, the Mexicans, I was in a jam. I had overbought. I had the storage auction district manager on my ass because I had two units I needed cleaned out. And he wanted them cleaned out that day. It was 10 a.m. There was no way I could do it by myself. Uh, my partner was out of town. It, it was just like I, I was forced to hire. So I went to Home Depot. And if you've ever hired Mexicans and go to Home Depot, wherever they congregate, they bum rush your car. 
I mean, it's just like the sea of humanity. It's just like, and I was in the big truck and they were jumping on the truck. Yo, me, 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 me. So essentially, for it was always one that spoke English. So I always got two or three. And I would just pick, you know, whoever his friends were and just tell them what to do. And this has just been my experience. I don't know about anyone else, but 99% of the time that I hired the Mexicans, they were hardworking, did what they needed to do, and they never had any problems. So all I had to do was just say, do this, do this, do this, do a little bit of management, and it happened. And what I would do is get their phone number and then call them. But the thing is, you get some guys that are good and you can't find them anymore because they went back to Mexico or immigration picked them up. So you just have to learn how to reload. Now, the second part of this is the power of six. You just have to sit that and do it every day. Create a task list every day and start knocking out the task. Uh, Jamal, how do we get your links and notes you send out? Uh, do this. All right. Actually, I didn't have to do all that. I was stupid. All of this. Okay. You see this right here? I'm going to send this out. You should be on it. Everybody that's on the list gets updates. And I will send this out to everybody. Sign up. You'll get the free audio book, all that other stuff. And you'll get updates and everything that I send out. This is from Michael. Publishing. Do you have an ABC how-to publishing? I don't, re I don't want to reinvent the wheel and know that publishing world is a new phase. And you've conquered it. I don't know about conquering it. I'm doing well. I'll say that. Because it changes every freaking month. I write drama, romance novels. Any suggestions you know how to see quite well. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Let me give you this. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on one second. I'm going to have to get my... Uh, Kindle open. I'm going to give you, in my opinion, the best thing out there for this type of stuff. Just give me a second to get to my library. And I will give you a wonderful resource that's going to help you because, all right, here it is. <sighs> This book was actually written by a friend of mine and two of his partners. This is probably the best thing because it just came out. This is probably the best guide on self-publishing right now for a few reasons. They actually did what they're talking about in the book. Many, and when I say this stuff changes every month, I'm not kidding. I bought some books. And the information that was in the books was obsolete in like two or three weeks because this company keeps messing around with algorithm. So, but for now, this is great information. They'll teach you a lot. They'll teach you about copy. This is, uh, and I actually will even tell you this, since you're writing, check out their podcast. And this is what you do. Let's get it. Okay. Just go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm not gonna play it, but just go ahead and uh, let's see what I was gonna do was because they're on iTunes also. You can go to iTunes and find it. But do this if you're gonna do YouTube. Some people like to watch it. Some people like to uh, read it. I mean, watch it. Some people like to just listen. Okay. They start this podcast. <laughs> Not not really that long ago, and they rocked it out. They really rocked it out. And what they're doing is, just to give you a little background, Johnny is a internet marketer. Some of his partners are copywriters, and they put all their skills together, and they came up with this wonderful method, and they're selling a ton of books, a ton of books online. So this is 
in my opinion, the best self-publishing guide out there right now. Uh, Robert, have you ever used eBay classified ad instead of the eBay auction? No, I use Craigslist. I heard people had success with that, but when I found Craigslist in like 2002, and only people who were on it were techies and programmers and stuff. I was making a killer. Uh, Cindy, Kindle, quick questions. Do you enable DRM rights or not? Nope. <laughs> All that does is pisses people off. Essentially, when you do that, they can't move it from the... It's, it's, a, it's a big hassle. Uh, I will say this. A lot of people are worried about being plagiarized or people taking their stuff, copyright infringement. It's happened to me. I've actually had to send out a C&D, and I actually got into some pretty heavy with one company about what they had uh, from my book on their website but don't worry about it even if it happens don't worry about it because essentially you will lock yourself down you'll stop producing and you'll spend an inordinate amount of time trying to chase down some stuff you just can't beat yes you do a table of contents Uh, this is from Chuck. How much of the old school business rules or facts are still relevant? A junior college professor told me that over half all businesses fail within the first three years. It's true. He said to start a business, you often need to pull 26 hour days, six days to seven days a week. How true and relevant is this still today? I say try it, but I want to know about the risk and what is involved or could it be? Okay, well, let's uh, dissect that a little bit. Typically, most businesses, about 90% fail the first five years. So that part's true. The other part about working 26-hour days, six, seven days a week, that's not true. You don't have to do that. You have to work hard. But it's really about structure and goals. If you have goals, this goes much better because... Let's say you're trying to do an internet startup. You may be working seven days a week, 24 hours a day, because it's a very competitive space, and you are working on your ideal, and there's probably eight other people working on the same ideal, so it's a big competition. But if you're writing books, if you're doing what I'm doing, no. If you are starting a donut shop, no. <laughs> if you're selling stuff on Craigslist. I have friends who are resellers who do a lot of digital reselling, I know they don't work 40 hours a week. Then I have a group of people I know who are working seven days a week because they don't have a process. Um, give you some real quick. Um, this is one of my clients. I'm not telling you what they're selling. But they sell an item that costs them 50 to 100 bucks to acquire for $300. This person works about 30 hours a week and makes 10 to 15 Gs a week. Gross revenue. And part of that is, before they met me, they were working seven <laughs> seven days a week, getting it, getting it, getting it. When you're an entrepreneur, no one ever tells you that, hey, it's okay to take days off. Uh, it's okay to put money away for vacations. We don't think like that because it's just like, there are people who've had their businesses five or six years, and they're only paying themselves twenty, maybe 30000 a year, and everything goes back into business. And if they tweaked it a little bit better... They can actually hire someone to do what they're doing and take home way more money. Many people put a ceiling on their income and a ceiling on their success. But many of the old school business rules are evolving or don't apply anymore. Because this is something, this is my saying. The internet does not level the playing field. The internet is a new playing field. And to give you proof of this, watch how many people who do really well offline then they come online and they're confused. If it was this great leveling field, they wouldn't be confused. They have to learn new skills. They have to learn new language. They have to learn new lingo. They have to adapt to apps and new technology. This is a whole new playing field. And that's why some people, it's great for God, for smart kids. I have seen so many kids, and when I'm saying kid, I'm talking about someone 22 to 28 Fresh out of college, couldn't find a job. They started some internet business. I'll give you one name. <laughs> I learned a lot from this girl. I mean, 
I don't even think she's 30 years old. Uh, let's see. If I get it. No. Is that it? Yep. Okay. I found her like three years ago. I was I was hating, right? Because she had this program called Backstage Pass to Twitter. This is why I say when new technology comes out, get on it. People are like, what's Twitter? What's Twitter? And she was doing this interview. She was charging $400 for a two-hour webinar on how to use Twitter. And I was, what made me go from a hater to a relator was she was giving the interview and she said, yeah, we sold out and we made $30,000 in, in like six hours. <laughs> now, now, okay, she's a million dollar business now. I'm, I think she did this in about six years. She went from that to a million dollar business. Because social media is still new. A lot of people don't know about it. And many of these younger people who saw it and realized that older folks didn't understand it were, are, were afraid of it and didn't want to learn it, they became the guides to it and made a killing. So your college professor, next time you see him, ask him how many businesses has he started and ran successfully. Because if he's never done it, then there's a lot of stuff he doesn't know. He may have helped other people run businesses or been a part of a business, but the energy that it takes to start a business is totally different than the energy it takes to run a business. That's why when the company gets big, it's very rare that the person who started it ends up being a CEO like Zuckerberg or Gates. or you know That's very rare. That's very rare. Uh, I want to get into online money stuff, making websites and making money from them. So far, I have two sites. The sites I need ideas for this. Um, what advice can you give me? Not a whole heck of a lot. I don't operate on the website money making tip. I do. I only have one website right now. I don't really do a lot with websites, and this is because of my business plan. There are people making killings. Um, there are folks with a hundred websites, hundred domains. They have them SEO'd and all this. And they're making three, four, five, six, seven thousand a month. But for me, that is a business model I don't really like because you're so heavily dependent upon Google. And every time Google changes stuff, I've seen it in boards, like go to the Warrior Forum. People will just like freaking lose it because it's like 80% of my traffic disappeared overnight. I just, uh, like I said, there are people who are doing it. They're doing it well. I looked at it, but I didn't like it. So I didn't really get in too deep into it. So I don't know a lot about that. Cindy, uh, Siri, 70%. I don't understand that question. Catherine, if you make a craft, would it be better to sell on Etsy or a blog or both? Both. Uh, I will say Etsy is probably the most equitable third-party platform there is in terms of um, payout because now they have it integrated where you sign up, you put in your information, and then they'll cut you a check like every week or you know deposits. I would do both because that way you can get those customer emails. But Etsy is not as, <clears throat> as eBay and Amazon about that stuff. Uh, little, what kind of system did you use to keep track of inventory in, rega in regards to buying so many storage units? An Excel spreadsheet. I would buy a unit and I would do big stuff in column A, furniture, bedroom sets. I would assign a price to it of what we hope to sell it for, you know, because when you got to the warehouse, then, you know, maybe a headboard was missing or something. So that killed that. So I kept a sheet, put the unit number on it, and then we... Because uh, it just became impossible to keep up with all the smalls. Anything that we got over and over again, regardless of how nice it was, it went to the dollar section. And we would just go piece count. Okay, 300 items from this unit went to the dollar section. And then we assign a value of a dollar for it. We may get it or may not. Because with the storage auction thing, you have to sort those units so fast. And if you're trying to go through everything and inventory stuff... You would have to hire people to do it. 
you couldn't physically do it yourself. I mean, you buy a 10 by 24 from the root to the tutor. It may literally have a thousand to fifteen hundred items in it when you pack the cool all the clothes, the dishes, or more. It's just it's onerous. You can't do it. So we did the Excel spreadsheet, big stuff, moderate stuff, then the small stuff went to the, the dollar section. But we did go over everything. Let me be real clear about that. We did a quick look because it take clothing. We had a clothing ID for eBay. Certain Ralph Lauren brands, certain brands, it just will blow your mind that Ralph Lauren purple label, you can sell a leather jacket that's no longer made for 600 bucks on eBay. That shit just blew my mind. So you still have to go through it and just like look for name brands and stuff. But if it was dirty, messed up, had holes in it, we threw it in the dollar section. Uh, Terrence, do you have any books about <laughs> reselling things? <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. I'm going to send you, I, I got a few. Uh, this is a resale book. This is resale and that's not, and that's resale. So I will send you a link just to let you know if you join Hustle University, you get a bigger discount on this stuff. Just saying, <laughs> just saying. Uh, Dana, do you ever have employees or do you use contractors for your business? And if contractors, did you ever have tax issues providing someone with that was a contract was a contractor and not an employee? At one point we had employees, not contractors, and my Latino brothers got paid in cash. So it's just between me, us, and the border. Never really had a problem, but we didn't have my okay. First of all, let me just be really clean about this. My business partner was an accountant. I didn't have to handle that. She was in a, she went to a school for accounting. She was a controller for a company. She did all that. So we never had any problems. I think that's one of the reasons that the business was so straight because I had proper accounting stuff in place from day one. Chuck's talking about 16 hour days. <laughs> Uh, Louis, Glennon, I net about two to 2300 monthly in profit. I sometimes get the urge to reinvest everything back in inventory every once in a while. My thought process behind this is I want to grow rapidly. Is that the wrong mindset? Uh, no, 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 that's not the wrong mindset. I mean, if uh, I know someone, that's how they got their FBA stock. Uh, they had a job. And they flipped all their Amazon money back into the business for a year and got it up to $150,000 worth of uh, inventory. And at that point, they started pulling money out the business. So it's a very good strategy. It's a proven strategy. If you can do that and the bills still get paid, I would say, go Louie. Melalicia, Mel 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 I believe. If someone were to get started with writing, would you suggest an ebook and put it on Amazon? just to get your feet wet? Uh, no. I would suggest that they start a blog and start building traffic. Start a blog about whatever you want to write about and build a following because you can write the best book in the world. It can be awesome. And you stick it on Amazon, it can get lost. Typically, the reason that I did well with my publishing company was I marketed the books from day one. Many writers don't market their books. They'll put their book on their Facebook page and like inbox all their friends and they think that's marketing. That's not marketing. So you will do better. There's a woman, I can't remember her name, but she wrote a blog for four years and people loved her writing. So she wrote a book and then she said, hey, the book's on Amazon and she let the people on her blog list know and it became a bestseller. She had already had a try for the book before she wrote the book. So what I'm telling you is invest in building a community that will support you before you put the product out. That will be a better use of your time. And also, <laughs> get this book. Uh, yeah, get this book. I'll, I'll send the link out again. Because they have a lot of information in there for beginning writers. What is the best book on marketing sales that helped me? You're going to actually trip out on this. Uh, 
Ah, that box is working again. This is the best thing that helped me. I got the six CD deal. This hands down was it. Because one of the things, and I'll send it out, one of the things is what Lead to Feel does is expands your mind on every part of your life versus just one. Well, you know, you want to get a book on marketing and sales and just focus on that. If you go ahead and work on becoming a better person and flip out with the marketing and sales, you're going to get way better results than just focusing on the marketing and sales, if that makes any sense. Kindle series, do you take the 70% auction? The options for Kindle are based on how much you charge for the book. If you charge $2.99 and above, you get the 70%, regardless of how short or how big it is. <laughs> What's up, Tamara? I'm starting a food delivery business, but I have nobody to fully commit to help me with the business. What can I do to hire help? Wow. Um, my question is to you, how much money do you have? Because if you're going to get what I call friend help, it's going to be unreliable. I would suggest this. Before you hire help, you will do as much as, you know, I don't know where you are with this business. Do as much as you can on your own. If that means like, okay, you have a job Monday through Friday, right? You can only do this on the weekends. You just stack up your weekends. Like Monday, you send out an email. It's like, look, the menu for this weekend is this, this, this. You get the pre-orders. Know what you're going to be dealing with. And if you need to hire help, you'll already have a gauge for how much help you would need versus just having someone sitting around. Rachel. I'm starting from scratch. I sell on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, and Bonanza. Where should I go from there? My question is to you is, where do you want to go? I mean, what do you want to do? Chuck, Glennon, I hear a lot of stuff about Microsoft these days with pulling security coverage, support, and et cetera from business and customers. I think this has something to do with the hated Windows 8. Oh, my God. I messed around with Windows 8 for a day, and I got a headache. What do you know of this and what do you think? I am down with your idea of using Apple, but I'm not there. Besides, we're often affected by big companies, even if we don't use them ourselves. Um, let's put it this way. I got away from Windows in about 2010. I, there's a program that does sourcing for Craigslist. That you, it only operates on Windows. So I got a computer and I actually ended up giving it to my daughter. It was one of the most excruciating things I've ever dealt with in my life. I mean, it was horrible. Part of it is Macs are much easier to use. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, they're selling this shit? Um, I just think, you know, well, Bill's not there anymore, and they just don't give a shit because that, that product was horrible. Um, do this. Go on Craigslist and get yourself a used Mac. Macs typically last three to four times as long as Windows machines for some reason. So if you get a three or four year old Mac, you probably got another two years of use and you can get it real cheap. But get a used one, play around with it before you make a commitment to the new one. But if you're going to do audiobooks, if you're going to do video, Macs make it much easier than Windows computers. Way easier. Because this is the thing. People talk about the money. When you buy a Mac, you get high-grade video editing software included in the purchase. That just comes with it. And you get GarageBand, which is how I use my, do my audiobooks. The only thing I had to do was buy a mic. <clears throat> so <laughs> they come with a lot of stuff that you can use for multimedia. Tony, star for an idea. Anything that you've seen that maybe you don't want to deal with, but you see greater potential growth in someone starting with little or no money reselling ideas? Uh, bam. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> get this book. I'm going to send the link out. I was ready for you on that one. Get that book. There's a ton of ideals in there. Just read it this weekend. Read it. You know, everyone else eating ham and chasing eggs. Read this book and it will make you, it will open up your mind to the possibilities. Uh, David, do you have any tips about how to go through your data that you collect? Do you have any hardcore Excel analysis or any, or is that any from, from the gut. I use pages 
which is, I mean, I use numbers, which is uh, Apple stuff. My data, honestly, is put together for me. Most of my data comes from YouTube because I made a decision. And that's one of the reasons I don't have uh, the blogs and all this other stuff. You can get great analytics, but YouTube has an ecosystem. Amazon has an ecosystem. And if you can get high enough in that ecosystem, they start doing things for you that you will not get with a blog. So all my metrics, and this is why you know I don't hate on YouTube, and when they go through changes, I don't start bitching. The things that they, I am, when I did that video, the YouTube saved me 1.2 million. I wasn't kidding. Some of the stuff that they give you for free, you go back 10 years ago, someone was making 40, 50, 60, 70,000 a year to collect that information and put it in that format. That's why I keep saying, if you have a job that a computer can replace, you're in trouble. So that's how I get my data. I mean, it's, I mean, it's graphs, charts, and everything. It's ridiculous. Uh, Brian, what program do you use for graphics or do you do them yourself? Um, up until this week, because I went right, really crazy with Gumroad. I mean, not Gumroad, but uh, Fiverr. A lot of the stuff, uh, Get Response, which is my, I'll show you. Okay. They give you so much stuff. They give you iStock photos, all kinds of stuff, and templates in the, just for the price of admission. That's one of the reasons that I like them much better than AWeber, and nothing's wrong with AWeber. AWeber is great. Just for me and the things that I do, Get Response gives me way more for the money. And it's the same, it was the same money. All that stuff, like the email I sent out with, uh, you know, Introduction to Hustle Universe, I did that using the templates they had. It, it just it took me like five minutes. So I get all my templates and stuff from my platforms that I use. Anna, after you're done with Start a Hustle, should you get a TN or EIN and set up a trust? I don't really understand your question there. Please revise that. Chuck, what is or are the best sources to get the facts on up and coming modern technology, computers, programs? Oh, I got you. Just go ahead and subscribe. You will you will get overloaded, but if it's tech and it's upcoming, it's here. I mean, there's so much stuff here. It's like I said, you get a lot of cool stuff here every day. I mean. Here it is. Appliances, phones, laptops, TVs, tablets, <laughs> everything. Uh, CNET.com. Gives you all kinds of cool and wonderful stuff. Keeps you on the cutting edge. Donica, aside from YouTube or a blog, are there any other cost-effective ways for someone to create a following or market their business or service that you could recommend? Uh, i.e. flyers, AdWords. I would not recommend AdWords. AdWords is extremely expensive if you don't know what you're doing. Even if you know what you're doing, it's very expensive. Flyers, they piss people off. I would say start a YouTube group. No, I mean start a Facebook group, YouTube channel, or podcast. Yeah, Facebook group, podcast, and YouTube channel. Because everyone has, I mean, just like you know, someone's talking about all the stuff that I can do with my platforms, you can go to let's close that you can go to blogger which is free um, let's see. you could just there's so much in there now that wasn't there because I did this I think I started this in 2009 and I got away from it but there's so much stuff that makes your blog look wonderful and there's groups and stuff that you have to do something more substantial to get a following because every anyone can have a great looking awesome blog in like 30 minutes or maybe two hours for little or nothing so you need something else David I ended up with hundreds of adult videos and other stuff do you know of a great online outlet to sell this kind of material 
as many sites don't allow adult, but I want to sell them rather than dump them. It is frustrating because no adult stores in my city would buy them, so turning them over quickly, there's no real option. Thank you for your advice and guidance. David, I hate to break it to you. You're screwed. There is so much free. Let me let me let me restate that. There is so much high quality free porn that is very hard to sell any kind of normal porn resale. Uh, my advice to you is put up an ad on Craigslist that I have a ton of porn and put all the porn in collections. Like if you know if it's girl, girl, boy, boy, whatever, put all that stuff together. And it's like, hey, this is what I have and take pictures of the titles and just like, hey, you know, 10 for 20 bucks or, you know, 100 for 50, something like that. It's very hard to get rid of porn that's not fetish porn right now. It has been for a long time. I just got that question. What's the best book on marketing sales? It was Lead to Feel. Uh, does the rules apply for digital comics or motion comics? Uh, that's pretty new. Anime is extremely hot, so if you're good, you can just build your own following. Kevin, kind of funny. Had no car, but a lady gave me a free bike and it worked great to get around on. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Mel Alicia scenario laid off work a few months ago, not enough save, but it's doing some storage auction eBay is difficult to do. It's considering it seems like bills will do faster than you're making money. Any advice? Okay, uh, hold on a second. All right, you, you, I don't know if you're gonna like this, but this is what you what I think you should do. I should think you should go through your house. And everything that's not essential or it's not like a precious keepsake, you target that stuff to sell. And you have a big garage sale. Or if you're in an apartment, you have an apartment sale. And you blow everything out that you don't need. Everything. If you don't need it, it's not essential to life, blow it out. Because you can replace stuff. Because everything that you have next year, the shit will be cheaper anyway. So sell it. Get yourself a war chest. And also, come up with a bigger game plan. You got to think about the next step. It's like, okay, I don't know what you do, but I'm going to share this with you. Uh, I think you spell his name. All right. This is a friend of mine on Facebook. Check out his blog. He and his partner are talking about what they talk about will scare you. Okay. It will scare you because we're running into a place where, I don't know how old you are, but if you're like 40-something or older, it gets worse the older you are, that it's going to be very challenging to find high-paying jobs. It's, because, it's not because you're a bad person. or you, know, you can have a high GPA. That shit won't help you. Essentially, the world is becoming more automated that companies don't need you. And they're not going to hire you. Why are they going to pay you $50,000 a year when they can do the software for $200,000 that will work for 10 years and save them millions? So that's what you're facing. But you need to come up with a bigger plan. I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what your dreams and stuff are. But you need to come up with a bigger plan and dedicate yourself to that. If that involves, you know, like I said, I don't know your situation. But if you're in a situation where you could lose it, you know, just to be unvarnished, sell it and get some money from it and move. You know, you may have to move in with friends. You may have to move in with your parents. But before you do that, get a game plan. Don't do what so many people do. They take their stuff, they put it in storage, they go move in with mom and dad, but mom and dad live in another state and they've got this $150, $200 storage unit bill and somehow bills don't happen and they, they lose it. Because they don't pay for it. This is why I'm really like, get rid of your stuff. So, I mean, that's kind of the brutal advice I have for you. If you don't need it, sell it. Downsize your life. If you got a car with a note, you could trade it in and get yourself a hoopty or a point A to point B type car. Because I bought a lot of stuff from people when I was in the storage auction business. And everybody keeps trying to maintain their lifestyle when the money that they needed to maintain that lifestyle is gone. And it's just refuse to accept that um, 
things are dire. And like I said, if you sell this stuff, you can get it back easy. But that's that's the, the uh, ideal I have. Louis, Glennon, is there a true benefit in having different eBay accounts for different niches? I will say 100%. Yes. <laughs> yes. We had a clothing account for clothing for a reason. Because certain things you get repeat customers. With clothing, you get repeat customers. I had a jewelry channel. Well, a jewelry ID. Where I only sold nothing but jewelry. And it was old costume jewelry. I got repeat customers. When you lump all your stuff together, you don't you don't get those collectible people. Like, uh, part of this came because we got so much stuff. Uh, I had a channel at one point where I was putting nothing on it but Hummels. I uh, got a big storage unit full of Hallmark ornaments. I uh, created a YouTube not YouTube, but uh, eBay ID just for that. It makes a big difference because you can, back then it was easy, you can keyword your channel so collectors find you and collectors pay more for good stuff. At the moment, I have two accounts on eBay, one for auctions and others to buy. When the item doesn't sell one format, I'll sell another format. Chuck, how does one obtain a newer used Apple product for the best price? Craigslist and negotiate. Or eBay. Sometimes you can find stuff like ridiculous cheap on eBay. Uh, Reginald, the Microsoft thing only applies to Windows XP and Office 2003. You can still use Windows 7. Reginald, he's a programmer, so he knows this stuff. <laughs> Here's Cleaver. Only use Windows 7. If you buy Apple, be sure to buy the Apple Care plan. I work for them and they appreciate and the Apple Care is vital when calling customer support. Catherine, if you do audiobooks, do you need to hire someone to read the book or can you do it yourself? I do it myself, but some people hire people. Uh, with that, I want you to think about the process. A 400 page book could take someone 20 to 30 hours to produce. So it can get kind of costly hiring somebody because these people usually like 60 to 100 bucks an hour. Okay, Rachel. Okay, rephrase. When you got out of online resale, what helped you to know to go from there? I got sick. <laughs> I didn't like just, I, we were doing great in the storage auction business. I didn't want to leave. I had to leave and my partner was uh, diagnosed with cancer. So uh, we kind of got pushed out. I always wanted to write. I always wanted to do books. I was the only guy that was a member of a book club for like 15 years. Voracious reader. It's just something I wanted to do. So when I wasn't able to do the storage auction thing, I just sat down and wrote. But that's why I say, you know, think about what you want to do with your life. Because I didn't think writing books was going to get me the opportunities. To get. It, just the whole thing was just to write a book. You know, because there's this mystery and romance with writers and now that I'm in the business I'm like I found out a lot of that shit was bullshit <laughs> but I still love what I do Cleaver do you have any bookkeeping tips for taxes uh, save all your receipts man uh, like I said my partner did that stuff and that's one of the reasons I don't even because the thing is taxes the shit changes every year it is, it is mind numbing what, what you have to keep up with uh, the tax things to be in compliance that's why I say hire someone. Just spare your brain. Uh, Jamal, I'm at a point where I need to get rid of all my stuff via Craigslist. My ads get no love and there's any tips of selling on Craigslist. One slick trick is put all your stuff that you have together, like you know, if you got 20, 30, 40 items, and have a garage sale. You get more love that way. And have a real garage sale. Put signs and shit up. Uh, Chris, storage auction business is taking a lot of my time. My kids want me to help out with their YouTube channels. How do I back off my business to help them? Um, what kind of help do they need with their YouTube? How old are your kids? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't. There's a lot more to that question, I think. You don't get analytics from Craigslist. You used to be able to insert this code to track, but no, Craigslist has locked that out. The question, do you have a, a recommend a, two, a YouTube info book or webinar? I will tell you what I know about YouTube real quick. 
YouTube has changed just like everything else is changing. And the best thing to do is to make your videos in a popular niche, keyword your videos properly, and make a lot of videos and learn how to use social networking. The YouTube that I'm on today is not the same YouTube that I started with in 2009. Different animal, totally different animal. What helps me is I started in 2009 and I didn't stop because I've noticed that there are many people, they hit that four, five, six, or even seven year mark and their channel just kind of takes off because this is one stat that's going to blow your mind. 50% of the videos on YouTube don't have 500 views. You go to 1,000 views, 70% of the videos, I think it's 80% of the videos, don't have 1,000 views. So if you're getting like two, 3,000 views per video, you're up in the top you know, 20% of YouTubers. That's how hard it's become. G, I, G, I got a database of about 250 leads. What do you think is the best way to start a call campaign with it? Well, um, depends. I mean, what kind of leads are these? Are they qualified leads? Are they targeted leads? Or are they just names on a list? There's a lot more that goes into that. Anna, should you start operating on your, your 10 or N as, as opposed to a regular social security number? Payment processing counts, operating names, creating an entity. Okay. Um, we talked about that. I'll do it real quick. You should validate the business, make money before you do any of that stuff. Make sure you're going to stick with it. Once you're making money, go ahead and do an LLC. And then at that point, you'll get an EIN and all the other stuff. It just depends on where you are and what you want to do. Yeah, okay, let's talk about Then You brought up a trust day too along with holding company. There was this course before this one that was 30 days to $2,500, which talked about a lot of um, these things. Because This is why I did Hustler University. I had a consult with a young man who's really working hard to do what he wants to do in life, and he's got a lot of barriers. And it just made me realize that some of the information that I was giving to people, they weren't ready for it in their business. I mean, there's so many people who eBay, Amazon... And if you're doing eBay and Amazon, you don't have a business because at any moment they can go and you're gone and your business is gone and your income's gone. You have a business when you're dealing with the public at large that nobody can put you out of business like eBay, Amazon, or YouTube. or That's when you have a business. That's one of the reasons I recommend having your own platform. Many people are like, hey, third-party platforms are great. You can live there forever and ever. I know a lot of stories of people who were making millions and got booted off eBay, booted off Amazon, and they filed bankruptcy because they were over leveraged. So essentially, 30 days to $10,000 is for the people who went through 30 days to $2,500 and they have business and they have cash flow. And that's one reason I created Hustle University because it's like nine bucks a month, 100 bucks a year. For people who are beginning, and I'm going to run a lot of information through there to help people get started. Because uh, when I started this, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, Declutter would not buy his porn. Robert, where do you get started with podcasts? iTunes. Just go on Google. Just go Google. Not Google. Yo, Google. Go to YouTube and just watch. 10, 20 hours of podcasting videos of how to and whatever, and you will become a podcast master. David, how can you get billboard and movie theater advertising for the Lolo? You can't. <laughs> it's a waste of time. You, an ad on a billboard, a cheap one's 3000 That's a cheap one. Uh, they can get up to tens of thousands, depending on where that billboard is. Yeah, uh, that's a waste of time. Don't even think like that. Don't even work. No. Peace lover. What is fetish porn? Uh, crazy stuff. <laughs> stuff your mama told you not to watch. <laughs> uh, Tony, selling my personal CD DVD collection. Two years old, older. Amazon FBA or by myself. Not planning on restocking. Um, Do both. 
take the Amazon, download the Amazon app, scan your CDs, see what they're selling for, and all the ones that are selling for good money, you uh, sell them on Amazon. You can do FBA, you can sell it yourself, and the ones that aren't selling, just the garage sell them out or put them on Craigslist as a group. Kevin, I confess, I work 16 to 20 hour days, seven days a week, um, working for myself. My craft is web, my craft is web design programmer. I feel like I'm not getting anywhere, though. I should resort to the plan of power of six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're reaching the point of diminishing returns, and you're probably doing what I call like cycling, where you're kind of going from this to the back to that, but you're not really getting anything done. Definitely. Yeah, same, 1,900 pieces, same thing. Scan them, see which ones are going for the most money. Put those on... Uh, Amazon, and if you mean sell yourself, because Amazon has two ways to sell, Amazon FBA and Amazon MF, which is Merchant Fulfilled, which means you ship everything out. Chuck, please tell Dave to be careful with selling that porn. I had sold and used porn dress for my friend's wife, daughter. I had a weird dude come out to look at it. He was either a pedophile cross-dresser <laughs> Sex stuff, open doors, all types of strange stuff. Be ready. Yeah, it can. It can. Louis, Glennon, I followed your lesson regarding offering your service for money, and I'm going to make an extra $100. This small-time, barely-surviving DVD rental business in my neighborhood needed to resurface a lot of their DVDs. I happen to own two professional resurfacing machines. The downside of this is I predict they will be out of business soon. <laughs> Uh, that's not a downside. If you know they're going to be out of business, you just position yourself to get the best inventory when they take the dirt nap. Just be ready if you think they're going. Uh, Peace Lover says, hi, Cleaver. And Chuck says, thanks. Uh, let's see. Terrence, I know you said eBay cursed you over. What good alternative sites can I sell my stuff on? Amazon, Bonanza, but the, the truth of the matter is eBay is the king because they were first, even and that's one of the reasons they're, they're so hard to deal with. There's not a lot of places, unless it's really highly specialized stuff. Uh, 11, 14 years old. Yeah, have them watch YouTube videos on how to make videos. Or uh, maybe they just want to spend time with you. Tell them, just take them to the storage auction deal when you uh, clean out units and have them help you. Gee, uh, construction companies based in a certain city. I'm selling my marketing services to them. Uh, like I said, just, uh, let me see. Let me see if it's still around. Let me see if I can find it. Cold calling. This, if I can find it, this book was awesome. Uh, let's see. No, I'm screwing up. There's this book I bought, and what, I didn't get it on Amazon. I actually, this is when you had to buy stuff on out of magazines. I can't find it. I don't see the cover. But uh, do this. Go here. Go through these books. Do the reviews, pick one or two, buy the book, and uh, do what the book tells you. I bought a book because I was really sucking at cold calling. In about six weeks, I got a really big deal for the company that came from that book. Eunice. I am a hairdresser and self-employed. How do I expand my business and double my clientele? Number one, you set goals. You set goals. You write on a sheet of paper. I want to expand my business. I want to double my clientele. You put up a number, whatever the number you want it to be, and then you put up a date that you want to achieve this, and then you work out a process on how you're going to do it. Cleaver's got to leave early, got to publish this website for my client and get paid. Have a good Hollywood uh, weekend and see y'all Monday. Same to you, dude. Uh, 
Okay, it is 401, so keeping with the format, I'm going to shut this thing down. But I will be back Monday. And before I go, no, nah, you don't need to see that. I'm going to let people know who want to spend the weekend learning stuff. You can sign up for 30 days to 2500 bucks. There's essentially it'll take you about <laughs> two months. Some people can do it in 30 days. Uh, some people will take 60 days. And I've had some people who are still working on it. And also, if you want the Hustler University year plan, it's going to be a lot of cool stuff there. So pick one of the things that you think will help you. And uh, we will rock out. Also, for those who want to see what else I have to offer, there's books and stuff there, but I'm telling you, join the Hustle University group because I set up a discount tab. So I've sent all that stuff. I will hold on a minute where everybody gets that. And uh, essentially, cold calling book, check out Andrew. If you're writing, this is the best book out there for publishing right now. This is, this is awesome stuff. I got it. The guys did what they're talking about, so it makes a big difference. Here's the podcast. You just put self publishing podcast. Start checking out the videos. Get this book, hundred dollars startup. It's awesome. Get rid of that. That's gone. That's gone. That's gone. And this is how you get on the mailing list. And that's it. So I want to say thanks to everyone that came out. I really appreciate you showing up and sharing the day with me. And this is Glendon. And I will see you on the good side.